Uh, I'm going to look at a special case here, and this special case is this idea of a rotation matrix. And for this rotation matrix, and this is in 2D, but it extends nicely to other dimensions, higher dimensions. So if you have some vector here, u, r times u, just takes this in the 2D plane and rotates at some angle theta. So physically, unless the theta is 0 or 180 degrees, there's not a real valued eigenvector, an eigenvalue associated with this because there's no way to rotate this vector and have it point in the same direction. Uh, however, once you go to the complex plane, you're, uh, basically you're going to be able to rotate this through the complex plane and get this thing to point out the way you want. So if I take r minus lambda i, I subtract lambda from the diagonal entries. I'm going to be able to find eigenvalues and eigenvectors associated with this. So let's take the determinant of this. Set it equal to 0. So I'm going to have this times this. Notice these are the same terms. And you have a minus a minus sine squared theta. Let's see. Now I could uh, foil all this out and try to factor it, but notice I can play a little game here. Because this thing is squared, I'm trying to solve for lambda. Let me subtract sine squared theta from both sides. Now if I take the square root of both sides, I'm going to have plus or minus sine of theta. So that's coming from the square root of sine squared theta. I need a plus or minus because I'm taking a square root. But then I'm going to take the square root of a minus. So that's going to give me my i. So let's see if I add theta to both sides and subtract that. I'm going to get theta equals cosine theta plus or minus sine theta i. So we have two eigenvalues and they're complex conjugates. Cosine theta plus sine theta i and cosine theta minus sine theta i. And if you think about this in Euler form, this is e to the i theta, this is e to the minus i theta, but we'll keep it in this form just to avoid uh, confusion because you're, if you're new to this. So now let me find the eigenvector associated with lambda 1. I know the other one is just, the other eigenvector is going to be the complex conjugate. So what did we have? We had lambda 1 is cosine theta plus i sine theta. And if I subtract lambda 1 off the diagonals. Get that. I have a minus sine theta. Oops, this is going to be a bit cramped, sorry. And this is going to be cosine theta minus cosine theta plus i sine theta. Again, these, and these diagonal entries are going to be exactly the same. So what am I going to have? I'm going to have cosine minus cosine is 0, minus i sine theta. Leave that alone. Leave that alone. And this would be cosine minus cosine is 0, minus i sine theta. And if I look at my augmented matrix, I'm going to have this is going to be v1 equals 0. This is my pivot. Uh, I'm off by a factor of minus i, so what am I going to do? I'm going to take r2. Let me do it. Let me stay consistent with what I did before. I'm going to take minus i r2, and the coefficient, coefficient here is 1, minus r1. So I leave the top row alone. 
So this is going to be minus i sine theta minus a minus i sine theta is 0. Let's see, so this will be minus i sine theta times minus i minus a minus sine theta minus i times minus i is 1 because right, it's going to be minus times minus is 1 i times i oops something went wrong oh this is going to be a minus a minus so that's going to be a plus sorry about that so this will be minus times minus is 1 i times i is minus 1 and so i'll have minus sine theta plus sine theta is 0. All right, so now it's in row echelon form. This is my pivot. So what's the equation? Get minus i sine theta x minus sine theta y is 0. Solve for my pivot. So let me do this in two steps. So I add. Oops. I'm going to add sine theta y to both sides. Divide by minus sine theta. Now I've got to be careful here. I'm going to assume theta is not 0 or pi. If theta equals 0 or pi, then I get 0 equals 0, and I get infinite solutions. So it's, um, this is not going to work in those particular cases. Right? And in those particular cases, if theta is 0, this is the identity matrix we get from the rotation. So lambda is going to be equal to 1. And if it's um, theta equals pi, it's just going to rotate at 180 degrees. So we'd have to treat these two cases separately. So let's just assume it's not some uh, factor of pi. So this could be 0 pi, 2 pi, or minus 2 pi on out. If that's not the case, then if I divide by minus i sine theta, the sine theta is cancel. Let's see, the complex conjugate is going to be i, so I multiply top and bottom by i. Minus, I squared is minus 1 times minus 1 is going to be 1. So I get Iy. So the eigenvector is going to be xy. x is Iy. y is a free variable, so I don't have any restrictions on that. I leave that alone. So I factor out the y. I'm going to have I1. So what do I have? I have lambda 1 is cosine theta plus i sine theta v1 is going to be anything times i1. Right. And so now that means lambda 2 is going to be cosine theta minus i sine theta and v2. So I'm taking the complex conjugate of that. I take the complex conjugate of that. The imaginary part is i, so it's going to be minus i. Imaginary part of that is 0, so that's just 1. And there are my eigenvectors and eigenvalues. OK. Um, so um, just to make this official, um, so I've said that if, oops, if lambda, is, if lambda 1 is complex valued, then lambda 2 is going to be the complex conjugate of lambda 1, and v2 is going to be the complex conjugate of v1. Um, so the question is, is, why is that? So what do we have? We have av equals lambda v. And let's just suppose this is lambda 1. Um, because I'm, if A is a real valued matrix, I know that uh, the roots of the characteristic polynomial are going to come in complex conjugates. So that means lambda 2 is lambda 1. 
Now I want to know what is the eigenvector associated with this, since I know that's going to be the case. So let's see, let me take a times v2, oops, a times v1 complex conjugate. So this is a new vector. Since a is a real valued matrix, its complex conjugate is the same. And so now this is going to be a times v1 and the complex conjugate of that whole product. I already know that this is going to be lambda 1 v1 because I know this is the eigenvector associated with lambda 1. So I'm going to take the complex conjugate of that whole thing and that's going to be the complex conjugate of the product. So there's my lambda 2 and that tells me that v2 is going to be the complex conjugate of v1. Okay, so for example, if I tell you that I've got a matrix where lambda 1 is 9 minus the square root of 7i, that immediately tells me that I've got another eigenvalue that's going to be the complex conjugate of that. So I just take the negative of the imaginary part and the eigenvector associated with that is going to be the complex conjugate of v1. Let me write that out. So I just take the complex conjugate of its eigenvector associated with that eigenvalue. So let's see. The conjugate of 2 minus i is going to be 2 plus i. The conjugate of 5, so that's a real value, is going to be 5. The complex conjugate of 7 plus 2i is 7 minus 2i. Oops, let me make that nicer. That's going to be 7 minus 2i. And the complex conjugate of 6 plus 10i is 6 minus 10i. So there, given an eigenvalue of 9 minus square root of 7i with eigenvector given by this, I know that the other eigenvector is going to be the complex conjugate of that, and its associated eigenvalue will be the complex conjugate of that. Thank you.